Uh, thanks for coming in a, such a short notice. I'm very impressive and surprised to see you know such a nice hall and then much made better than IIT. <laughs> I gave a talk, a similar talk in the uh, morning, um, but um, I realized uh, it will be happy to share the, what we are doing now with you guys for the possible collaboration or integration, whatever in the future. So I uh, probably have only the 30 minute um, talk, but um, I want to share as much as possible. So um, I apologize, I probably, I very quickly look, you know, the, the jump here and there, but it's good for me to show what we are doing now, so that maybe if you have any doubt, any question, maybe we can discuss it later, hopefully, okay? So the, my area is uh, called the systems bioallergy and or biotechnology. Maybe you may ask, what is the difference between system biology and biotechnology? Difference, basically, system biology is for understanding, but actually, I'm originally from engineer, so I like money, right? So I like to do more than the understanding. So we like to design, we like to engineer, those kind of things based on our understanding. So that is uh, somehow the, uh, my research motivation, considering cell factory is not like a you know, chemical factory, but uh, we can use the cell as a process to uh, build and then produce all the valuable products. Right, especially my main one of my main focus is a biopharmaceutical, working with a mammalian cell called Cho cell, Chimes hemp's ovary cell, which is one of a workhorse uh, commonly used to produce all the value added uh, uh, protein drug and so on and so forth. Right, so yeah, this is uh, some of example. More than half of the uh, all the top breakbuster uh, in this industry is made by the Cho cell. So there is a very, very relevance in the, to my research. So then the question is that the area in the goal in this area is we want to uh, uh, make a good cell line, good cell, potential to produce more, okay, better. At the same time, once we have a, such a cell, then the next level is, the next stage is we want to grow them as much as possible. This is now process, okay? Cell and process, goal is we like to understand Okay, we like to understand, and then we like to identify some bottleneck, and then the target need to be manipulated to improve our cell culture performance. So goal is very clear, then the question is how can we achieve it? So that in the, uh, our systems approach is come, came into a picture. So what we are doing now is we use all the different high throughput data. You probably heard of a transcriptome, metabolome, and so on and so forth. So at the same, same time, we also work with the mathematical model. So we like to combine all together. So basically what we are doing is um, we build a different research platform using the, our omics profiling and then more statistic analysis. Same time, we build a mathematical model describing cell. Then this uh, research platform allow us to integrate and combine toward the uh, top-down system approach we build uh, another research program called Systems Biotechnology, okay? Um, let me give you some of the uh, idea what we have done in this uh, platform. So in this platform, first step is we need to generate all kinds of uh, high throughput data, right? Once we have such a data, the next question is how to manage, how to process, how to analyze. So platform technology is re required. So we build the old required platform uh, for covering the old omics profile here and there. So this is uh, what we have done so far. At the same time, another important component in this framework is uh, in silico model. Probably uh, some of you are familiar with the mathematics, right? So um, you know the kinetic, I mean this uh, experiment data is very condition specific. So sometimes is we may not get some insight or some limited understanding. So that's why we also want to work on this model, which can be derived based on the first principle, right? Some invariant property. So so this is one of the example. How to make a model? So working principle. I would really like to show later, but uh, what we can get out of uh, from the model is uh, we can make some uh, good uh, testable hypothesis using the model, and then we also predict some of behavior under different condition. 
of course, uh, we need a very reliable model. There's some question whether your model is good or not. So, but nonetheless, if we have a very good model, we can do many things. Okay. Then, the, what is a scope of model? There are many things, many parts, and many process in the cell, especially metabolism, signaling, and regulation. Although I'm also working on the other, but uh, here I just focus on metabolism. Okay. Metabolism is look like this, like survey system, right? So. Um, this is from Korea, Subway. Uh, I think this is London. Um, my opinion, most complicated meta, uh, this uh, Subway system is Japan. Do you agree? <laughs> He's from Japan. It's because uh, there are many different company, you know, build their own line. So this is my video. Sometimes I don't, I'm easily lost, you know, I don't understand. But anyhow, it looks like a very, uh, uh, the metabolism, there are some pathway and then some, some similar line here and there. But basic idea here is, there are some two main process involved in the, during the metabolism. One is uh, catabolism, you know. The other one is anabolism. Catabolism where we generate the currency, like energy, okay? We just work hard to make money, right? So once we have a money, then we have to spend for what? To buy something and then grow. So that happening in the uh, second stage, like anabolism. So we use such energy to build some building block for biomass or cell growth or whatever. So that is uh, happening within the metabolism. Then the question is how to build, how to understand such a metabolism using model, mathematically formulate. This is what we are doing now, okay? So basic understanding of uh, our reaction system, there are some environment and then cell, there are some input and then some output, then cell growth. Within the system, there are some conversion, series of conversion, uh, substrate, product, through the enzymatic reaction, most of you probably know. So then the question is how to model, why is the working principle? So here we use, uh, Balancing, not like this. This is so balancing, but what I mean is mass balance, metabolic balance. That's important, very, very important key concept. So, you know, the accumulation is input minus output. If you know this first principle, you can do many things. If you like to make money, what you can do is you can increase input and then you can decrease your output. You spend less, you earn more. Then you can you know, make money. Same thing happened if you like to the, do a diet, okay? So then you can eat less and then maybe secretly more, something like that. So that happening the, during the, uh, within the metabolism. So now we try to understand, describe such a metabolism mathematically. So this is some of the uh, formulation related to kinetic model and station analysis, but I don't want to go detail, otherwise uh, you'll be you know, the sleeping, <laughs> so I like to avoid it. But anyhow, there's some, something happening in the metabolism. Then there's some question required, uh, the, uh, may uh, uh, we arise, like how valid, okay, previously the, there's some kinetic model, kinetic formulation. But the kinetic is very complicated. That we require more data and then the information. So, uh, alternatively, we just uh, assume the uh, some stationary uh, assumption we call pseudo steady state assumption. Then the that's still okay because it's uh, valid. So how valid? Uh, some idea here. Now you are asked to understand the see a movie, whole movie, but you don't have enough time because you have to work hard and then do study, right? So, but you are asked to know and estimate your whole story of a movie given the limited snapshot, right? So same thing happened. You cannot monitor all the detail during the cell culture for one day or uh, um, maybe one month, but what you can do is you can have a very good snapshot, several you know, snapshot, and from there you can estimate what's going on. So that is uh, happening. Okay. So some of the very interesting movie I really like, probably some of you know that, Usual Suspect. So it's movies actually, uh, who are the uh, uh, crime, the, you know, commit crime. So I don't want to say who, who are the, you know, <laughs> suspects. So, so that kinds of thing, you know, similar thing happened to the uh, metabolism, okay? Um, 
So, so, so another analogy, uh, this is a road network. Okay? We want to build uh, uh, the metabolism looks like a road network, right? So they're already there, already there. Then once we have such a road network, what we can do is, where is uh, the um, 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 traffic? We can like to build a good navigator, right? So similarly, we want a good navigator metabolism or something like that. This is a goal. This is the utility of the uh, model, okay? So mathematically, we can formulate like this. So this is uh, uh, input and output, and then this is accumulation part. Then the, we know how much you know, our flux through this pathway, that pathway under different conditions. That kinds of thing we can be done using model. And then the, uh, a little bit talk about the, uh, some model. It's model is not just small model. It's very huge, big size model. We call genome scale model because we develop such a model based on the genome information. Then the, we collect all the relevant information and data related to um, gene and protein and metabolite reaction and so on and so forth. So at the end, through the uh, all kinds of required step covering this, uh, um, almost more than 100 steps, then all the detailed information, then we have a model. So then we have a model and apply the uh, different analysis technique. We can get some insight. We can predict something under different condition. There are many, many utility. Um, regarding this, there are a lot of uh, relevant algorithm has been already developed. So I don't want to go into detail, but I just like to show this kinds of application possibly uh, considered. Okay, so I like to skip. So then the, regarding the model, in terms of model, uh, many people, uh, not many, some of the uh, uh, group are trying to build uh, the, such a model all over the world. Uh, we contribute some of them, including Jaimamonas, Rhodococcus, some of plant, and then some of mammalian. Some of recent work done is uh, including Candida tropicalis, which is the repeat accumulating yeast. We can use them to produce some of uh, 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 long-chain dicarboxylic acid, which is a precursor of uh, uh, 6, 12, nylon something. Okay? So we're going to use to understand. Um, similarly, uh, we also work with uh, some of the collaborators from Korea. They are working with uh, kimchi fermentation. So one of the dominant uh, microbe is Leuconostal. So he wants to understand more using the model. So we try to help them to by building the, such a complicated metabolism and then uh, compare with other LAB, like uh, Leuconostal and then Lactobacillus, or those kind of things. Moving forward, what we are currently doing now is uh, we select some of the uh, interesting and then important LAB from the different group class and then the, we like to consider uh, which combination is good for maybe probiotic application or postbiotic application, and as well as a cell factory application. So we are currently exploring that. Okay. Back to the, uh, my research focus on the mammalian, the Cho cell. So we build a, a community uh, approach, I mean, the base model for Chinese hamster ovary cell. Uh, in this project, those are actually our competitor at the beginning. Three years ago, we had a chance to meet together. Then we discussed, drink beer, and then we realized, oh, maybe we can work together rather than compete each other, right? So then we decided to work together, and then we spent a lot of time to build such a huge model for Cho Cell. So this is a happen, okay? Um, so then the, at the end, the, the, it was published, and then the, the model is available. So then we published in the cell system uh, last year. And then this is another interesting work uh, through the uh, collaboration from Korean collaborator, like uh, uh, Orisa Sativa, you know. This is a uh, rice. So this is a rice model. So we also build a rice model to understand um, abiotic stress, how they affect in the, the plant system, something like that. So this has been done. And then the, we're also working with the Panax ginseng, which is a ginseng. Korean ginseng. So we build a, such a model and then understand why this guy has been evolved to synthesize more important terpenoid like um, um, ginsenoside, which is a triterpene, as you know. So then the, we probably figure out what happened uh, uh, from the different ginseng. This is our current work. Okay, so now back to the, my, my overview slide. Now we have a good um, omics profiling here. We have a good model here. 
Now, the next step, we love to integrate together. Then, this is a really uh, a systems biology approach required component and the data. Then the people may ask, so why is the systems biology? If we have such a model, if we have such a omics data, combine them, is it systems biology? Yes, but uh, maybe 10 years ago, uh, this person is Nobel Prize winner, Sidney Brenner, uh, who criticized systems biology, saying that definition of systems biology is low impure, high throughput, no output biology. So I agree somehow, because at that time, people just are trying to generate the data. Then they expect, oh, once we have a good data, then we probably get something uh, from there. But the reality, truth was not like that. It's more complicated, more headache, because some of the gene is up, but uh, different level is down. It's not correlated at all, right? This is a confusing, something else. So they keep asking, oh, we need more data, more data, but even more complicated, right? So this is a situation where the people are struggling at that time. Then now, the big challenge in the right now is generating data is not a big issue. If you have a budget and the money, the people, but the big issue is how to integrate different omics profiling, how to combine with the model, this kind of thing. So now, I just quickly show the some of the successful story where those data can be uh, integrated systematic way. So this is uh, one of my recent work. What we did was we worked with the Cho cell. This is a wild type. This is a producer. Producer can be designed, engineered by inserting certain gene, then to produce some protein drug. Okay, then we are interested in what happened after such a transient integration. So we trace back, look at different rebel genome, transcriptome, metabolome, glycome, and we can use the model to understand like what is a key cellular product attribute. So this has been done recently. So my colleague in my institute generate all kinds of omics profiling, genome, transcriptome, metabolome, glycome. My group is a work with the in silico model and then applying the, all the necessary statistical analysis and then the uh, computational model analysis. Then we come up with some of idea and the trade, what happened, what's going on, okay? So long story short, uh, just like to show that such a comparison, even some one gene integration, there are a lot of big arrangement happening at genome level. So they can be done, found using the, our genome data. And then transcriptome level, and then metabolome level, and so on and so forth. So this is a quite interesting work. So this is a quite a kind of a summary. Okay. All right. Then uh, I like to move on the uh, model-driven analysis. So now we have to demonstrate the usefulness of the utility of model. If we have a good model, we can do many many things. So one of the example is uh, now people trying to build uh, the sum of algorithm allowing us to identify new target. So gene insertion, removal, overexpression. People have some idea based on their experience or intuitively they can see, oh, I like to remove this in order to redesign something like that, redirect towards some of uh, you know pathway. But it's very ad hoc, you know, the dependent on you know, the experience. So now what we are doing is that we use in silico model, systematically analyze, look at all possible combination, then we can come up with a very short list of target. So this is happening, right? So this is a relevant work. So we build, we develop some new algorithm methodology uh, using the transcriptome data together with our genome scan model. So we can identify some of overexpression target, okay, to improve our over uh, uh, productivity, something like that. So this is uh, some publication. So we apply the algorithm to the streptomyces, and then the, we we show some of the target is really experimentally validated. Then the uh, I like to skip the mathematical detail. Then the now we try to apply that to the our mammalian system, and then. Uh, another interesting algorithm we develop is called Beretta. So people just uh, focus on the metabolic gene, but we are also interested in the transcriptional regulator. This is a global regulator. It's a more powerful, more effective. So we build a similar kinds of algorithm allowing us to identify such a target. Okay, we need uh, expression data. We need a transcriptional regulated network. We need uh, our metabolic network model 
that we combine all together, then finally we come up with the, uh, some of interesting overexpression target for or down regulation target for uh, this uh, transcriptional regulation. Okay. So this has been done. Okay, so this is sort of a summary in my first part of uh, today's talk. So we developed a system biotechnology strategy where the in silico model, multi omics data can be combined. Okay. So some of the study uh, was presented to show the how it can be uh, successfully applied. So some of model-driven strain design strategy. Okay. Then next part of my talk today is uh, uh, synthetic biotechnology. Okay. Some of you are not very familiar with. So why is it synthetic biotechnology? Look at this. So now we are working with some of the Lego block, Lego bricks here and there. Then once we have such a brick, then we can assemble the, the design and then make it something interesting, something new. So this is a sort of a synthetic biology application, right? So artificially done. Um, so the synthetic biology area is very broad, but now there are some other examples I'd like to share with you is uh, um, how to um, build synthetic gene design and then protein, fusion protein design. This is a one of the uh, possible applications. So this is a uh, uh, synthetic gene design, it's a codon optimization. Now, you, you, many people try to engineer some living organism cell by introducing some of a new gene here and there, right? But the um, challenge is such a gene originates from different organisms like a plant. But I like to express my plant gene in my microbial host but expression level is not high enough. It's mainly because of these kinds of things. Codon sequence, codon bias, different codon uses, preference. So we need to minimize such a difference. So this is a working principle for the codon optimization. So what I did was I developed algorithm and methodology and then find the patent and then also implement it. So this website is available for the uh, accounting purpose. So this is uh, what we have done. Okay. So then we apply this codon optimized algorithm to the uh, different expression system to validate. Um, this is a Cho cell. Uh, this is a E. coli, some E system. So it was quite successful. Of course, we cannot say it's 100% accuracy. Some case is not working. But there's some high chance to be uh, overexpressed sometime. Basic idea is again reference codon bias in our expression host in terms of a different criteria, codon usage or codon context. Our target sequence to be changed or manipulated in order to minimize such a difference. So that's a happening core part of codon optimization. That at the end we can generate code optimized codon sequence. So this is uh, some mathematical formulation. Um, so design parameter and variable is uh, we can change it, our coding sequences here and there. Okay. Then this uh, codon optimization have been applied for improving our expression level in the our microbial system. But there are some potential application in the bio health uh, healthcare application. So for example, gene therapy, and also DNA vaccine. This is uh, one of interesting area. So uh, due to time limit, I, I just uh, skip, but there's some potential. Gene therapy is uh, we also need to codon optimize in order to express level is uh, good enough. But at the same time, there's some immune response is caused by CG uh, motif. So we have to avoid. So during the codon optimization, we have to minimize number of uh, CG, right? Same thing happened to the vaccine, DNA vaccine development. In this case, we need to stimulate so we have to de-optimize. So that kinds of strategy idea can be you know, applied and considered during the optimization. Okay. Then, uh, you know, the, anyone who have been in Singapore before? Good. So how was it? Very nice. Yeah. Singapore, you have a different image and uh, view about the Singapore. But many people say, oh, Singapore is very clean. L law is very strict. Something like that, right? But um, I can say Singapore culture is like a mixture. You know, 80% is Chinese, but 10% uh, is uh, Malay, also many Indian origin. Okay, so this is very harmonized. And the Singapore culture is like a mixture. 
some of the culture is called Peranakan, where the two cultures from China, Malay, and then fused together. So this motivated me to do something interesting in terms of uh, fusion protein. Right? So synthetic fusion protein design application, which also I have worked. So there are many interesting applications, for example, multifunctional enzyme, some people working in the biosensor, protein switch, protein therapeutic, and then expression, and so on and so forth. So, but here, what we can do is we try to fuse two protein for better functionality, but that the one of the key question and challenge is how to fuse. It can be fused through the uh, linker, linker. But the big question is which linker should be considered? There's no answer, right answer. People just add on, some people report, oh, some linker is good, working. The people just follow it. So there's a very less chance to be successful expression and also bioactivity, something like that. So what I did, what we did was, okay, in that case, we look at all possible linker, then we build a database, and then we can use some computational modeling approach, then we can simulate, okay, given the combination, given to fusion partner, together with our selected linker, whether this is uh, plausible and then good for, in terms of uh, activity or stability, that kinds of thing can be done, right? So this is uh, one of our previous work. So we build uh, some uh, called the SYN linker, uh, so that uh, uh, this is uh, uh, currently available, okay? So this is sort of a summary. Um, what we did was, um, uh, in terms of this system, synthetic biotechnology, we are currently working in the synthetic gene design and synthetic protein, protein design, and then we develop a relevant tool uh, for this research. All right, so this is a really summary of my current research. So we have a two research platform, three research platform. Uh, together, we build a two research program. One is a systems biotechnology via top-down system analysis, and the other one is synthetic biotechnology We are bottom of uh, design principle, uh, okay. All right, so this is really my last slide. So this is Singapore, actually. It's a very interesting, right? So, um, you know, this is uh, actually downtown, and uh, Singapore is a very small country, and then, the, you know the F1, Formula One racing game? That happening in Singapore every year. Uh, actually, it is uh, during nighttime because it's very hot. But the good thing is we use, we don't have any specific designed uh, stadium. We use the, the rear road. At that time, the, we block the road, and then the F1 racing happening. Then the, the hotel price is going up because they can watch you know, from the hotel. But uh, the, actually, what I want to show is, the, you know, the, these kinds of racing game, we always uh, control using the two parts. One is a breaker, and then the other one is accelerator, right? So systems of ours is such kinds of accelerator, right? To boost up and then you know the speed up. Okay, so if you still do the such a your research without bioinformatics and system, no problem. But if you want to really competitive and then speed up, maybe you may consider maybe systems of is one of a possible solution. All right, so finally, I'd like to thank the, all my work done by this uh, postdoc, PhD student, and collaborator. Um, I'd love to thank, uh, and thank you so much for your attention. I'd love to take any question from you guys.